Bonjour. Comment ça va? Ça se plume? Ça va bien? Oh, OK. Comme si, comme ça? All right. That's all right. However you are doing, we're happy that you're out there. I'm glad to be able to be with you today. Um, again, for those of you uh, joining us from before or for our new uh, viewers, um, we are learning Louisiana French, uh, the French language of Louisiana spoken by um, um, Louisianians of who call themselves either Cajuns, Creoles, different um, American Indian, Native American groups, or just uh, French Louisianians in general. And uh, so this is the French language of Louisiana that we are learning lesson. So we are third lesson. Um, again, if for those of you who would like to um, f use some uh, uh, paper resources, I have, a, I have a document I can I can share with you that I kind of follow uh, to some degree. And um, the uh, if you uh, when, once you're done with the video or if you want to stop now and go, you can Facebook message me. Um, even if you're not a Facebook friend, I can. Uh, I will check uh, those fa uh, Facebook messages that I get and I can add you to a little group called Louisiana French Lessons um, and I attach the, doc the documents attached in there and you can ask some questions there as well. So we're talking about Louisiana French which is a variety of the French language as spoken in Louisiana um, just as every, every place in the world uh, speaks different languages a little differently just as one country might speak English different from another country speaks English the same is true with French so we're here to talk about the particularities of the French language in Louisiana but at the same time many of the things that I'm going to say will apply to French spoken around the world okay I'm going to, I'm going to compare it to what I call international French I don't use you can use the term standard French if you like but um, there um, you know, that's another term, school French, I use that term. Don't really use the term Parisian French because Parisian French would be in a sense like Louisiana French, it would be a local dialect of France. It would be the way they speak in Paris. So, and uh, the way they speak in Paris is not necessarily the way they speak in the south of France, which is not necessarily the way they speak in Belgium or, or Quebec or New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Louisiana, they're all different. Up in Maine, they speak French, you know, the different ways to speak French. So we're gonna talk about Louisiana French as this variety of French, and, you will, and when I can, I will point out some differences. In Louisiana, we do have, um, we also have another kind of language that's uh, very similar to Louisiana French that we call, um, that we, we, some folks call Creole French. Some people use the term Cajun French and Creole French. Uh, linguists tend to use the term Louisiana French and Louisiana Creole. Now, Louisiana Creole is, is, is distinct enough that linguists will call it a different language. But there are communities in Louisiana where, um, where there'll be persons identifying as Cajun who might speak Louisiana French and persons identify as Creole who would speak Louisiana Creole or sometimes what they call Kudivini and they will understand each other. They'll speak to it. So that happens. They're, they're that close that you can understand them. But they do have some significant differences. And every now and then I'm going to point out some of those differences and I'm going to point out some terms and I will also pour out terms, as I said, uh, in relation to uh, international French as well. Uh, um, just, just to be a point, of, just to make a point, um, when I speak the term Creole, we're not talking about, we're taught, we're, when I speak the term Creole, um, you know, it has a sense you can talk about people being Creole or the language being Creole. There are folks who identify as Creole who speak the language, the same language very similar to those persons who identify as Cajun, which is why we tend to use the term Louisiana French. But there are, there are people who identify as Cajun who speak a language that linguists would call Creole. So it's, it's a very complex situation. The media and the national teacher tries to make our situation very simplistic. They tend to label everything Cajun, um, you know, which I'm a Cajun. I'm very proud to be Cajun, but Cajun does not, does not encompass all of Louisiana. Cajun does not explicit, ex, ex, uh, you know, mean specifically uh, Acadian. Uh, it, has a, it has a different meaning as well, just as Creole doesn't mean, has anything to do with, with, uh, with uh, the color of your skin. Um, there are, these are, Big questions that we can address some other time, but for right now, let's get back to learning Louisiana French. And today, what we talk about is pronunciations, and we're going to use the very back of the packet, back well, back page of the that I gave you. I think it's labeled page 14. It kind of looks like this, so you can see. And we're going to talk about vowel pronunciations. How do we pronounce vowel sounds in Louisiana French? Okay, and uh, we're going to learn some vocabulary at the same time. So it's going to be fun. All right, you all ready? Let's go. All right. So when we look at this little packet here, you're going to see that I have listed the different ways the vowels may be written with the different accents. They have an accent. There's, there's three types of accents in French. There's an accent grave, accent aigu, accent circumflex, which in school we used to call the accent um, 
uh, chapeau chinois, which it looks like that, which there's sometimes in modern French they want to get rid of, but I still like it. And um, it's like it's called the Chinese hat for some reason. Uh, and um, you're going to see the way they're written. You're going to see. I'm going to give you uh, the way it we pronounced in uh, an English word. Now, it's the way I pronounce it as an English word because there are variations. You know, the, there are folks who pronounce words differently from the north of the you know uh, from the north northern parts of the United States to the southern part of the United States. Pronounce it differently up in Canada. Pronounce it differently out on the West Coast. Different. There are different varieties of pronounce. So it's the way I would pronounce it. So you're going to see that when I read it, or you're going to hear that when I read it. But I tried to give you as close up an approximate pronunciation as possible, and then I'll give you some words in French, Louisiana words in French, and so that we'll learn a little bit together. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Let's get started. All right. So the first thing we'll talk about is the sound ah, which I just spell with a with a couple different accents and a by itself, and that's like ah in the sound pot. In fact, pot. It's the way you say this. Uh, there is a word called la pâte, okay? Uh, pâte, P-A-T-E, with the accent. And P-A-T-E is the word for um, bread dough in French, word for bread dough in French. I mean, I remember a story of a, uh, there was a, there was a dear, um, dear elderly lady one time who, in her English wasn't all that, uh, wasn't all, wasn't the best, and she, um, uh, the only, she didn't know the word for bread dough in French, uh, in English, so she used the word pot and same thing, you know? And one time she was trying to get some bread dough that she, she would uh, bring into her neighbor's house, and she was afraid the, that the, it, was, it was rising, she was afraid it was going to drop. And so she was kind of driving kind of fast, and uh, you know, the policier, uh, you know, the, they pull, pulled her over, and um, he, uh, he said, you know, you're going kind of fast, madame. And he goes, yeah, buddy, she says, I got some pot in the trunk. Um, well, <laughs> that didn't go all that well, but that's okay. That's a true story somebody told me. I don't know if it was true to them, but it's a true story they told me. <laughs> So another word is la, la with an accent like that means there, la, la, la. And then you have pa, P-A-S, pa is typically used to make sentences negative, okay? Uh, 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 je veux pas, I don't want, uh, je connais pas, I don't know, all right? And pa also is the word for a step, like one step, un pas, two steps, deux pas. And then the last word is traca, a word we know about in Cajun French, traca. It means, uh, in Louisiana French, you'll hear this term, traca. It means like problems, trouble, worries, things like that. Now, if you want to make the sound I, like in the word, like in pie in, in Louisiana French, in English, isn't it? you have to use these three letters, A-I-L. In fact, A-I-L is a word. It's I, it means the word for garlic. Um, usually it's written, it's pronounced lie because it has an article in front of it, L apostrophe, lie, uh, but it's a word for garlic. Pie is also a word in Louisiana French, uh, and it's, uh, it's a word for straw, la pie. Okay, uh, and then another word is kanai, and you can see again how these words are spelled right here at the end of this page. Kanai, and kanai is um, well, you'd probably be called kanai if you did a lot of that other word traka. If you got into a lot of traka or you did a lot of traka, you would be called kanai. Okay, and kanai means like you're mischievous, conniving, doing some little bad things. Okay, kanai. Okay, good job. Here we go. Everybody got it? Traka, kanai. Let's hope we don't get in too much traka and you're not being kana. Or maybe just a little bit. All right, the next sound we'll talk about is the sound O. And we make O with A U E A U O um, uh, with, um, with just the letter O. Yeah, It's been very popular in the, in the news. And uh, people like to use E A E A U X to make O, but that's only one way to make O. In fact, you know, in fact, it doesn't always work. Uh, it's not the best way to make it for combining with other words, but, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk, let's talk about just O, oh, the sound O, oh, and some words. For example, faux, like F-A-U-X, faux. We should know that. We make in English, we say a faux pas, they buy a faux fur. And faux, faux make, basically means it's not true. It's false. It's fake. Okay? Uh, chapeau, chapeau, right here. I'm wearing a chapeau. Uh, and then capo. Capo is the word for a coat. In Louisiana French, a capot is a coat. We don't use the international French term manteau very much. In France, I believe capot refers to the hood of a car. Capot. All right. Now, a, u, and o, if they're followed by a consonant, very often will have a different sound. It's kind of like the way I would say the word bought. Uh, it was that o oh sound, like bought. I bought something. Okay. And so you would have it like in the word hot, h, a, u, t, e, hot, uh, low, hot. Uh, Low hot, we combine these two sounds together, the O and the OT, low hot. Low hot is the word we use for high water, okay? Hot is the feminine version of high, high water, or flood. A flood is low hot. Uh, and rose, rose, and rose is a rose, or rose is the color, okay? Color pink, I should say, all right? Um, 
the little the e i talked about that before <clears throat> excuse me the e the unaccented e is basically not pronounced in louisiana french for the most part um it's kind of dropped and you know only only when you actually need a sound you're gonna have that little uh sound there in other parts of the world like for example in the south of france they accentuate it very much you know they'll say de la viande you know in louisiana french it'd be de la viande okay um the little e sometimes the e the eu eu makes the e uh sound like a peu a petit peu a little bit um le the article for the masculine words ve, we did that before uh, je veux tu veux il veut you know i want you want he wants i veux she wants okay and then all of these ways here the, all these different e's right here all these e's here can make the sound like in english sound eh like they can make the sound like fit like and fête is something that we love. La fête, la fête. That's a party. La fête is also uh, the holiday. You know, les fêtes is the holidays. Uh, on va, on va, on va fêter la fête de Pâques dans pas longtemps. We're going to celebrate the feast, the holiday of Easter, in, 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 uh, in not too much time. Also, fête is the word we use for a birthday in Louisiana French. Uh, uh, we always say bonne fête, have a, you know, which means happy birthday. Bonne fête. And so, if it's your birthday today, bonne fête. Uh, another word we have is crev. Crev is a word. Um, it comes from the verb, uh, one of the verbs uh, meaning to uh, uh, to die. Mourir is a word to die. But crève we use uh, in different in different ways. Like crève you would use like if a plant was dying. You know, la plante va crever. La plante crève. You know, the plant is dying. The plant dies. You know. Uh, we also, but we use it in some senses uh, to describe other things. For example, la uh, crève de faim. Uh, crève de faim means like I'm dying of hunger. I'm starving to death. And so we use that. And then belle, belle, B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. You know, we've heard the term the Southern belle. Where it comes from, the idea belle is the word we use for a, a beautiful girl, a beautiful woman, or anything feminine that's beautiful, that's good looking, that's attractive, that's nice. It's belle. And we also use it in Louisiana French to describe a girlfriend. Girlfriend, ma, your girlfriend, ça c'est ta belle, your girlfriend. Um, boyfriend is ton beau, beau and belle. You know? I love those terms a lot better than some of the things I've heard in other countries, like. In other varieties of French, they'll say for your boyfriend, girlfriend, they'll say things like uh, petit ami, my little friend. Or uh, they'll call your girlfriend ta blonde, even though she might not be blonde, you know, but I like beau and belle much better. Okay. All right, let's get to another sound. The next sound we talk about is the sound for the sound A. And to make the A sound, most of the time, you need an E. It can be the E with the accent aigu, the ER at the end of a word. And sometimes we also make it with the, with the AI or the E accent grave. We sometimes make those sounds as well. Um, and so you have words like bébé, which is baby, of course. Danser, that ER ending, to dance, danser, okay. We even pronounce the word sometimes, this, uh, many regions pronounce M-A-I-S, me with that A sound. Some regions pronounce it with an S sound, like a short E, you know. Uh, if you're, my friends up in Nova Scotia, and I think even parts of like Vermilion Fire, sometimes it's like ma, almost like an A sound. And then um, après, we don't say après, we say après for after. And then as apre is also used in the, the, prog the present progressive tense, making that ing form of the verb. Now that e and that ai that I just brought up can also be pronounced like the a in fat. So you would hear words like frère and père, brother, pad, a pair, or pad, in different ways. Though pad would be for the father. But in some communities, it's pronounced like a um, e, a little bit, little bit e, like an a sound. Uh, for example, just. My, my, my parents would talk about it and back in the day. There was more of a distinction. They come from two towns right next to each other in Lafouche Parish. And one of them, uh, where my mother's from, they would say words like Cher, Père, Mémère, Dans la Rivière. You know? And in my dad's town, they would say Cher, Père, Rivière, Mémère, and words like that. They have a little bit of difference in pronunciation. So you'll hear those two. Um, another sound that I really love in Louisiana French is this, uh, and it's actually in international French as well, is Oye. Oy. It's like uh and e put together and becomes oy. And it's spelled with an E-U-I-L. It's found in words like fei, the word for leaf, or chevreuil, the word for a deer. Um, now, another one that has a variable sound is the letter I. The letter I can be pronounced like a short I in English, like I, or it can be pronounced like E, depending on the region where you're from. Uh, sometimes it's always pronounced like I, like uh, and um, like um and ville, you know, you'd always, you always say ville. I'm not, nobody in Louisiana says ville, but not really, you're always ville, pretty much. But in some that do vary from region to region, you will hear église and église, or live and live. Ville is a town, église is a church, live is a book. Live is also the word for pound. Uh, when it's feminine, it's uh, la live, that's a pound. When it's masculine, le live, that's a, um, 
it's a book. And um, now, Eglise and Live will depend on where you're reading you're from, where you say Eglise or Live. Where I'm from, we say Eglise and Live, but it would totally be understood either way you would say it. Okay? Um, now, the E sound with the letter I is very short. Most vowel sounds are very short. Every now and then you have some that extend, but most vowel sounds are a little shorter than you would hear in English. Um, one that would extend a little bit is when you would spell the I or the I with the two dots or with the IE um, or IL or Y. And that's kind of like the two E sounds are like this different, I like to say, different between feet and feed. When feet, the vowel sound is very short, you spell that with an I. Uh, feed, the vowel sounds a little longer, okay, and you would spell it with all of those different ways that are listed here, okay? And for example, you have a word like, um, so the short sound would be EC here, uh, MAI, um, all right, MAI, which is the short sound, um, which is um, which is the letter I with the little two little dots on top there, and that make, means you pronounce that letter. It looks just like the word ME, okay? And um, but it's it's with us when you have those two little dots on top of the I, it means you pronounce that letter and my becomes corn. So just in case I might have been confusing, let me just uh, re restate that I, that I, E, that I, L, that Y, that's the short E sound. And the I, L, L, E, that's that longer E sound, like in like in feed. OK, and there you have words like fee, which is um, the word for um, the word for a girl or a daughter. Koki is the word for like a shell or seashell. Uh, abi, which is uh, comes from the verb abie, which means to get dressed. Okay. Um, the next sound we're going to talk about is u. U is spelled like an o u, and you have words like vu, which is the uh, polite u, or sometimes the plural u, vu. Shu, which is the word for cabbage. Okay. Fu, which is the word for crazy, and su, which is the word for drunk, and bu, which is the word for mud. You know? I remember my my mother. Uh, I was a pretty much a kid. I like to, I, I like to, I didn't like to really get my hands dirty when I was a kid, she would say. So if I got gone outside and, and I was couvert de boue, if I was covered in mud, she would probably say something to me, Kirby, te fou or te sou? You know, Kirby, you, you, you know, you crazy or you drunk? Uh, she probably said that when I would act up. I, I did like to act a little bit as a kid too, so I probably said that too. Now I wanted to make a distinguish again with that sound I taught y'all last time, that sound of u. U again, you make with a round mouth like an O, but say e. U, and it's spelled with just a U. And you hear it in tu, which is the subject singular for you. You hear it in vu, which is the past tense of the verb to see. Like it's spelled, we see it in English in déjà vu, but it should be pronounced déjà vu, déjà vu, uh, already seen. And then bu, which is the past tense of to drink. Uh, okay, past tense of to drink, um, uh, like drunk or drink. And then gru, which is grits, you know. Uh, try to work on those two sounds, u and u. Okay, try to run two sounds, u and u, and um, when you're doing that, you're gonna, um, you, you, you're gonna again, if you can't do the u all that well, it's better to go towards the e, because you might make a mistake. Like one student, one student I met uh, who was up in, uh, I think it was up in Canada one time, they were learning French, and, and uh, you know, she, uh, we had a party and fete one time, and she asked me, you know, Kirby, uh, and she asked me, uh, try tro, boo, yer, soir, you know, something like that with a nice, beautiful English accent. And I was like, I understood, oh, est-ce que j'ai trop bu hier au soir? I figured it out later because at first I thought she was asking me if I had too much mud. But instead she was asking me if I drank too much, which of course I did not. <laughs> so um, we're going to leave you with that for now. I do want to tell you again, on the front of the page, there's a list of some sources here. This is some sources. You can check them out. And again, you can check out that first source, the LSU Cajun French so, uh, site. You can find it easily on, on a web search. And uh, there's some uh, little uh, activities uh, toward the later pages where you can do, go to the site and see if you can um, fill in what's missing. Either like I might give you the English word or, and you have to provide the feminine word or I might give you the masculine and, uh, I'm sorry, I'll give you the English word to provide the French word or I'll give you the masculine and you provide the feminine and vice versa. And you can practice on that Cajun, uh, the LSU Cajun French website. And again, if you want the documents, please message me. I'm sorry I might speak a little fast, but uh, I have very, very slow internet of the house, so it takes forever to load up this uh, this video. So the video you're seeing right now I actually did many hours ago. Um, when I was at my parents, it loaded up in 15 minutes. They have much better internet. I'm going to have to go back and visit them once the whole uh, crisis is over with. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Soignez-vous. Take care of yourself. On va se laver les mains. Wash those hands. And... Uh, uh, tout le monde va être correct, tout le monde va être magnifique. We're all going to be okay. All right? Bye-bye.